Up to now, for space transportation companies, launching rockets into orbit has been difficult. But carrying additional payload, even if it's only two or three tons, is even more difficult. But SpaceX is turning those things into very normal things. The Falcon rocket line has the advantage of being cheap and reliable. It can launch multiple times with multiple payloads as required. Not a few dozen tons or a few hundred tons, but so far, the Falcon has reached the milestone of transporting a thousand tons into orbit in less than a year of operation. This has set a new world record that no one has been able to do, shocking everyone, especially Blue Origin and NASA. So, where is SpaceX's limitation? How did Elon Musk react? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As dawn's first light graced the coastal skies of California, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket etched a trail of ambition and innovation into the heavens. Falcon has delivered over 1,000 tons to orbit this year, a world record, Musk wrote on X, showcasing his pride. He also said this is much more than any other country has launched with its rocket fleet in a year. The closest competitor was the Soviet Union at its peak, with around 500 tons. In comparison, the rest of the world has launched only about 250 tons into orbit so far this year, with China being the major contributor. Of course, SpaceX won't maintain this figure. They'll continually enhance it through flights from now until the end of the year. Earlier in the year, Musk had predicted that SpaceX would account for 80% of the total mass lifted to orbit 2023 with China responsible for 10% and the rest of the world contributing the remaining 10%. The newly announced record hints towards the company closing in fast on Musk's expectations. I'm sure they can do it. According to Bryce Tech data, SpaceX has topped the world's payload mass to orbit for seven consecutive quarters, often with a significant margin. This year, SpaceX extended its lead even further, sending about 10 times more mass into space than its closest competitor, China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, in the first two quarters of 2023. While SpaceX sent approximately 214,095 kilograms of spacecraft up mass during that period, CASC launched 23,069 kilograms. Russian space agency Roscosmos, according to an infographic shared by the user, only launched 8,100 kilograms. As SpaceX continues accelerating rocket launches, Elon Musk has made a firm statement about the company's goal. Based on the Falcon launch plan for next year, SpaceX will deliver approximately 90% of all Earth payload to orbit. These numbers are going to get even crazier when Starship starts sending up cargo. A fully reusable stainless steel rocket is designed to carry over 250 tons to Earth orbit, enabling SpaceX to achieve 10,000 tons, even 100,000 tons into orbit in the future. It's worth waiting for such wonderful milestones in the future. Returning to SpaceX's record-breaking flight, this is not a normal Falcon 9 launch carrying the satellites. It's more special when carrying 90 payloads for various clients to orbit, and it's called the Transporter 9 mission. The payloads included CubeSats, Microsats, and orbital transfer vehicles that'll deploy more spacecraft at a later stage, according to the mission description. While 90 is an impressive number, it is not the highest. SpaceX's Transporter 1 mission still holds the record, with 143 satellites launched in January 2021. Transporter 6, which flew in January this year, was also more productive, with 114 satellites on board. All of SpaceX's rideshare programs have now deployed approximately 800 payloads in less than three years. Fantastic! This remarkably high number brings numerous benefits to the entire satellite launch industry. Typically, these shared missions entail waiting for the primary payload, a larger payload, to be ready for launch. Then, the smaller satellites hitch a ride, launching alongside the primary payload already designated for the larger spacecraft. Consequently, these additional passengers must accept an orbit dictated by whenever the larger satellite's ready. While these factors often implicate their on-orbit performance due to established launch operations, the upside is that dividing the payload weight in such a way that can significantly reduce costs. Furthermore, these missions will showcase more frequent schedules, allowing for better planning of launch dates and target orbits. Notably, a satellite weighing up to 50 kilograms can venture into space at a low cost of up to $275,000 thanks to this type of mission. Therefore, the transporter missions have elicited strong reactions across the commercial space industry. 
Satellite operators and rideshare launch brokers have hailed SpaceX for providing space access with numerous benefits, especially when they have limited options from other launch service providers. I can't understate what a critical part of the new space industry transporter missions are, remarked Todd Master, chief operating officer at Umbra, on social media. There are entire businesses that are enabled by this that could not have existed five years ago. Developers of small launch vehicles have argued transporter missions undercut their business models by offering launch services at much lower per kilogram cost than their vehicles. Some have gone so far as to accuse SpaceX of predatory pricing, claiming the company is offering transporter launch services below its costs. In a panel at the Satellite Innovation Conference on October 17th, executives said that SpaceX's line of small set rideshare missions has had a hugely chilling impact on the small launch industry that struggles to compete on price. They definitely control and have a dominant position in the market, said Kurt Blake, former chief executive of launch services company Spaceflight, who now leads the commercial space group at law firm Wilson Sassoni of SpaceX. I think the real question is pricing and what's their cost and why so low, so dramatically low. SpaceX started offering rideshare launch opportunities for small sats as low as $5,000 per kilogram. The company has since raised those prices to $5,500 a kilogram and plans annual increases in future years. However, in most cases, those prices are far below what dedicated small launch vehicles offer. I don't think they had to go that low to have a commanding share of the market, he said. Estimating SpaceX could have gained significant business at prices of $10,000 to $12,000 per kilogram. That had to have a hugely chilling effect on any other money flowing into startup launch companies. SpaceX's transporter line of rideshare launches is focused on missions to sun-synchronous orbit, where the bulk of demand is today, but the company announced in August a new series of missions, Bandwagon, that'll go into mid-inclination orbits. They are, little by little, taking over what the small launch vehicles are able to accomplish, he said, adding that there's still room for dedicated small vehicles for missions to different inclinations. But you have to think of that as a threat. Concerns about SpaceX's pricing of its smallest rideshare missions are not new. At World Satellite Business Week in September, Marino Fragnito, senior vice president of the Vega Business Unit at Ariane Space, said SpaceX was offering pricing that was not sustainable in the market, driving out other companies. Launcher companies could not live with that level of pricing. Is SpaceX squeezing other people out of the market? I think to a certain extent, yes, said Adam Spice, chief financial officer at Rocket Lab on the Satellite Innovation Panel. It'd be very naive to think their strategies around rideshare aren't targeted towards limiting the competition. SpaceX's position in the market reduces forgivable failure by other companies, he said, and its approach is exacerbated by the difficulties many companies are facing raising funding, even as SpaceX has seemingly endless access to capital and private rounds. It makes that a very difficult entity to compete with, and they can do very unnatural things for long periods of time to make it difficult on everybody else. Other panelists said that they were looking for niches for their vehicles as ways to remain competitive in the market. The one-size-fits-all launch market isn't necessarily the best way to go for the long term in order to meet all the different government and commercial needs out there, said Patrick McKenzie, Director of Government Business Development at Firefly Aerospace. He cited the company's success with Evictus Knox response launch missions for the U.S. Space Force, launched September 14th on an Alpha rocket, as an example of such a capability not offered through rideshare launches. But, he added, those services still need to be cost competitive. You got to get your price down. You got to compete at a competitive price. Pablo Gallego, senior vice president for sales and customers at Spanish launch vehicle developer PLD Space, said SpaceX has helped build demand for small set launches at those low prices. His company has received interest in the company's Mayura 5 small launch vehicle in development for dedicated missions that can't be served by rideshare missions. The market's so big, he said, allowing room for both dedicated small launch vehicles and low-cost rideshare missions. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.